Hey guys, today I am going to make the argument that Wizard of Coast will ban every one of your favorite EDH cards. Now, as one of the first players of EDH, I went to law school in William & Mary, and in my first year of law school, that summer I went to Richmond to do an internship. Oh, my second summer of law school, sorry, my second summer of law school, I keep thinking it was my first, I, I did an internship in Richmond, Virginia which is one of the birthplaces of EDH. And I was introduced to the format. And the idea of the format was Wizard of Coast specifically does not have any claws into the format. Now they do. Now they own the, the rules committee. They all quit. And they all decided, hey, we're not going to honor the memory of our good friend Sheldon. We're gonna give this to Wizard of the Coast, which Sheldon was very, very against. How many times did Wizard of the Coast ask Sheldon to sell Commander to him? Probably millions of times for millions of dollars, right? Because Commander is his baby. He created it. People don't understand Wizard of the Coast had nothing to do with the creation of Commander. In fact, they never would have created it because it goes against their, at the time, standard. People also don't understand what standard was at at the time. People did not want to play standard. People didn't want to play it because of JST Mind Sculptor. You either play that deck, Clawblade, or you play aggro and you kind of, you know, can win a little bit. Otherwise, they were two deck. It was a two deck uh, format. And unfortunately, if you wanted to play the better of the two decks, you needed four $100 cards. The reason people created EDH's was as a backlash to the monetization. People forget about this. They don't understand the history of Magic because none of these people, even Autumn Buccelli, she started playing back to Zendikar. Well, of course, if you went to back to Zendikar, you don't know what Zendikar was like. You know, you didn't play at the time. You weren't a real, and this is what I mean. I don't mean it in the, in a, you know, it's just the timing, right? These only fan models, like they don't play no Magic the Gathering. They don't know nothing about the history of the game. And that's why, when Teresa Nielsen gets banned by Autumn, it's it's a really huge travesty to me as an old school player. I don't give a damn who Autumn is. Right? I don't care about her. Him, them, they, non-binary. I don't care about non-binary. They had no impact on the history of Magic for me because I don't care. I played when Teresa Nielsen was a very, very popular artist on Magic cards. I played when Autumn wasn't even playing. And Autumn wasn't even non-binary at that point in time, right? So anyway, neither here nor there. I'm an old school player, and I live by old school rules. And the one rule for EDH is Wizard of the Coast does not get involved. Because had they got involved, they would not have pushed it to the point it is right now today. Um, they want you to buy a playset of JST Mind Sculptures for $100. They want you to buy a playset of all these shock lands or whatever new lands. They want to push standard because standard requires four of every card. And then there's a rotation. So in about a year, all your cards become worthless. So then they could sell you new cards. So that is the whole idea of standard. And that's why they needed to push so hard to get EDAs. They need to sell you new cards. If they're not able to sell you new cards, they will not make money. But the whole idea of EDH is using your old cards that you no longer play with. That is the entire point of EDH. I think people lost the plot. Um, they lost it, man. They, they don't understand what EDH is about. EDH is about using your old cards that you don't need to spend more money on. So when I look at the Jewel Lotus, it really screams abuse. It really screams abuse to me, right? Um, and, and here's why. They created a card that was power levels much, much higher than anything in EDH. It's, it's a Black Lotus for your commander, essentially. I, I mean, it is what it is, right? Um, they, they played that card. They made a card. They sold not just one set from it, Commander Legends, right? Then they realize, oh, hey, everyone really needs it. We're going to create an upgraded version of it. An upgraded version of this. Um, and they did. So they created the textured foil, the borderless, and all this stuff. So then they sold an entirely new set based on one card called Commander Masters. I mean, that entire set was based on one card. 
one card. And then, you know, on top of all this, right, uh, again, this is just uh, crazy news, right? And then they started doing contests and uh, commander things, and, and then you're supposed to play. Like, it's... Like, they started taking the fun, casual element of it and making it more competitive. And then suddenly everyone needed that Jewel Lotus because if you don't have it, you're not competitive. The, the idea of, like, when I was playing, I had this um, one player in our play group. He played the worst deck ever, but it was all his, like, favorite angels and foil. So the, the worst deck ever wasn't even a cheap deck. It was, like, a very expensive deck. And he kept always trying to trade my, my Radiant Foil. He's like, I really need that. And Radiant Foil was like basically almost worthless at the time. It's worth like maybe $10, $20. And I always remember like holding on to the foil. But he made an angel deck. And angels are terrible creatures at the time and even now. But that was what he wanted to play. He wanted to play a bunch of angels. And it wasn't because it was competitive. It wasn't because it was a good deck. It was just because that's what he enjoyed collecting. And now he could put his collection of foil angels in the deck. I mean, that collection is probably worth 10 times, 20 times what it was worth at that time. But he doesn't care. I mean, he played the deck even, you know, even before then. So my point is, they're killing EDH by monetizing it. And, and there's nothing wrong with monetization, right? If you're a big corporation, you can always send the Pinkertons out. Like, they're like, oh, these people have been bullied and harassed. Well, send the Pickentons, for God's sake. You send them before. Like, why not send them again? Right? Hey, if you think these people are being bullied and harassed and whatnot, then send the Pickentons. They'll stop the harassment, right? That's what they're supposed to do. That's sarcasm, by the way. But they did actually send Pinkertons to <laughs> a Magic the Gathering player's home. Which uh, many people like Alpha Investments supported because these corporate corporate This stuff is just sickening, guys. The dude, Sheldon, he could, he could have made a shit ton of money selling this, you know, selling this to Wizard of the Coast, right? Selling the rules committee and so on and the power. Because Commander is the only thing that makes money. Standard sucks, draft sucks. I haven't played standard game in forever. I think my last standard deck is like uh, from, like, I don't even know what, Shadows of Innistrad. And has like Averson, the really cool Averson, like five, four of the Aversons. Man... This stuff is messed up, man. Like, you got to understand from an old school perspective, this is 100% a money grab. I don't even need to, I don't even need to know what the next step is. The next step is create another Jewel Lotus, sell a bunch of it, and then ban it, and then create another one. Why, repeat, rinse and repeat. Like, let me ask you this. If they create a Jewel Lotus that doesn't provide free mana, but provides two, would you play it? Oh, yeah, of course. Okay. Let's create a new set for it. <laughs> anyway. Hi, guys. Or, oh, God forbid, a Jewel Lotus that provides four mana of any type for your commander. I mean, it could go either way. Either either of those two cards will sell a set. Just make sure to ban it after you're done selling. 